This is our Forex blog for August 9th, 2012. And like we do most days, we buy the strongest currencies versus the weak, and we sell the weakest versus the strong. I'm always trying to improve our systems over the last six, six and a half years that we've been focusing on Forex. We have put in a bunch of tools, thrown away the older ones, which aren't as good as the new ones. And I'm trying to make it as simple as possible, even for a brand new trader that doesn't know anything. And most new traders don't know 50 to 100 things that they need to know. Support resistance, Fibonacci areas, value uh, areas, pivots, previous days, weeks, and months, high and low, how to identify the strongest trending currencies, when to get in on um, pullbacks or sideways consolidations, when the markets move statistically too far in the direction of the trend and it's likely to reverse. These are all things that we teach. The more you spend time watching our videos, and it might take you three to five times for some of the more sophisticated ones, uh, the better you're going to do. Uh, there's probably more doctors in the country than there are successful forex traders. So if you're not willing to do the work, just turn this video off right now and, you know, go back to your job and forget about trading. You know, you're going to lose. It's guaranteed if you don't do the work. Uh, that being said, I am trying to make things more simple for people. Uh, my partner suggests that I uh, take some of our statistical tools. You can see uh, this one here. CAD was very strong today, um, the euro was weak, um, there were times from about 7.30 to about 10.30 right here that the yen was weak, and so, you know, uh, he suggested I take, you know, a, a new statistical trend tool I'm working on and translate it into a simple red-green system. So this should be out in the next few weeks. Uh, the trend's clearly up. It's breaking out. It made a higher high here, pulled back. One of our methods to get into a trend is to find a strong trend. Dark green is strong. Light green is less strong. If you get a pullback and the bars don't even turn red, you know, you buy it here, and then hopefully you can push the Control F button to bring up my our Fib tool, draw this on the chart, and this makes a wonderful profit target. Look, I mean, um, watch our eight-minute video on how to do this. It's very simple. You get in here at 20, you're out at around 43, you made about 20 pips while risking less than 10 because when you buy it right here, you just simply put your stop underneath the low here. So that's one thing I'm working on that make it easier for people to trade. Another one is uh, our value areas, which uh, I realize that people, a lot of people are lazy. They're not going to bring up daily and weekly charts and put our volume profile charts up, which shows you where the most trading activity happened during the previous day, which is the yellow line, nor uh, the value areas, which is where 68% of yesterday's trading activity happened, from the red lower one to the green upper one. This is where 68% of the activity happened, and the yellow is where the most um, activity happened. So above the yellow line, you want to buy, especially breakouts of the upper value area you want to buy, breakdowns of the lower value area you want to sell, and in this case, it's pretty much a no-brainer. Uh, the market tried to go higher, failed. As soon as it goes red here and breaks down underneath the value area, you can see it you know, led to a very nice uh, and huge trend. When it broke down below last week's value area high, you know the market's trend was high, uh, strong earlier. It was above last week's value area. Once it came back down there, it's likely to work its way down to the point of control of last week, which is the orange level. It's the exact same thing as the yellow one. The yellow one shows you where most activity happened, trading volume, you could say, of the previous day. The orange, bigger ones, are for the previous week. And this acts like a magnet, and kind of, once it breaks the value area high, it's likely to work its way down there. You can see that's about 60 pips away. And our tools were clearly showing you uh, to sell it. The currency meter also was showing you to sell it. Look at the euro right here. Extremely weak. Real time. The real time tools are made up of five different statistical trend tools averaged together. Three of them measure direction, two of them measure the intensity of direction. So anytime you see this red at and above the dotted 80 line, it's basically telling you that, you know, 75 to 100 percent of Euro pairs are going down and they're doing so with incredible intensity. In other words, it's a trend that's likely to continue. Underneath that, we have the 15-minute, hourly, daily, weekly, and monthly trend. Pretty much all time frame trends are down. So you want to sell it. You know, the dollar is right here. It was very strong today. The 15-minute trends up, the, the hourly trends up, the daily trends up. The weekly and monthly trend of the dollar is down, so you never know when the longer time weekly and monthly trends are down uh, if this uptrend is just you know going to be temporarily. But today it lasted all day. You've got to be on the lookout 
of, uh, you know, for trends to kind of run out of steam. But, you know, using the real-time tools, the momentum, and, of course, uh, you know, here's what that chart looked like on uh, the five pips per bar chart. After that pullback, you can, you know, if, if you really want a simple way of entering a trade, put on our new uh, moving average uh, that has digital signal processing technology built into it. You've got to uncheck this, click the DSP. I like to have them white. And I'm going to shift this five period very fast, super fast moving average two bars to the right. And when you get a decent enough pull back up and price goes underneath there, you go short. Now in this case, the bar was green, you know, light green, which means there was still a little bit of strength in the euro and a little bit of weakness in the dollar. But as soon as it turned red, you know, you're pretty much, you know, on board with this. You can see it stayed dark red all the way down here. And here's the light first light green. You might want to get out here at 80, whether you got short at 12. You know, you made about 30 pips while risking, you know, 10 or less. It's that simple. And here you can see it fell. There's a little bit of weakness. The weakness disappeared. A little bit of strength. Notice the strength let up. If you went short right there, anticipating the trend going down, well, it went sideways here and it got less darker red, which means, you know, tra trade's not going to work. Not every trade's going to work. You can't be emotional about trading. You can't even give a damn if the trade's going to work or not. Trading is a game, and it's a simple game, and you can have very high winning percentages and equal-sized wins or losses, or you can have very low winning percentages and still trade well by having bigger wins and losses. I mean, a 30-pip win gets rid of three losses, right? Out of four trades, you could be wrong 75% of the time and break even. So you have incredible odds. You're trading with our tools. You're trading the ones most likely to continue to trend. Wait for a decent pullback which to me is 15 to 25 pips. This pretty much barely meets that criteria because it went back up to all this sideways chop right here. There's likely to be some selling there, so I would have taken that trade, and it didn't go down and didn't come anywhere close to the low here. If you wanted to do a counter trend trade there, that's fine. Most of the time, counter trend trades work their way up to the 1.618 FIB target at the most. Notice it touched that level to the pip. If you wanted to to lightly get in at 1.2321 short and add to your position when it breaks the moving average, you know, uh, you had a wonderful trade right here. Here's the pound dollar. It also went down today. I brought this up uh, a little bit after or around 9 o'clock, and you can see it was a lot of weakness here. It rallied up on almost no strength, so you sell it. On the way down, there's just not as much weakness as before. It's lighter red. When it's going sideways right here, uh, it's pretty good odds because of how many pips it went down that it's going to retrace to, you know, it's way back up. Most of the time, retracements on the way up go 38% of the down move. It's a very safe assumption, and sometimes they go, sometimes they work their way to the 50% or the 62% FIB. And this one, you know, most of the time it goes, if the trend's really going to continue, it doesn't go past the 50. Uh, so in this case, it was a few pips away from there. It came down, it went back up. There's definitely not as much uh, momentum at the, at the, you know, pretty close to being a double top right here. Very high probability trade, and as you're in the trade, it gets darker and darker and darker, and it's not able to go below the low, and so you get out somewhere around 10 to, to 15 right here. You just made 20 pips while risking maybe about 8, and that's really the only key to trading. It's not hard. It's not rocket science, but you certainly can't have emotions about the trade if you lose so what? If you're getting nervous about a loss, you, you might be trading with money you can't afford to lose. So, you know, take a pause from trading, save up, you know, $1,000, 2000 5000 10000 whatever uh, that makes you feel comfortable, uh, and trade small until you're consistently making 10 to 30 pips a day, and then trade larger. You know, and if you're a new trader, don't risk more than 1% or 2% of your account per trade. Our software has position sizing uh, tools. You can watch the video that completely explains that. Trade Analyzer Planner. And if you play with that, around with that Trade Analyzer Planner, you'll see that getting 10 pips per day, that's it. Net uh, doubles your count every two months. So it doesn't you know, take a lot of pips. Most of these examples I showed you today uh, have moved 20 or 30 pips. So let me go over our um, you know, value areas. Again, the the yellow and the orange ones are the previous days and previous weeks most traded levels. 
with the upper and lower value areas con containing 68% of trading activity. Notice this one here. Price entered. It was underneath last week's uh, most traded price, and that was not a coincidence that that was a high last night. These are major areas of support resistance. And once it came back down underneath the uh, yesterday's value area high, it's right near a Fibonacci retracement level, so it's likely to be some support. But once it breaks there, it's very likely to work its way down to the point of control yesterday. And, of course, it did. It fell without that much weakness. So I wouldn't uh, be upset with anybody for wanting to buy this, expecting maybe a, a move back up. But not notice the Fib level here. It's resistance. It's likely to find some selling there, which it did. So, you know, it went up without that much strength. So you'd get out of the trade here. When it pulls back down here and kind of goes sideways a little bit, you want to go short. Here's your next profit target. The weekly pivot's the next one. 20-day moving average is the next one. And we have the value area low down here as well. Lots and lots of different support areas all on a very tight 10-pip area is likely to be the low. And, you know, if you, once you saw the weakness disappear, if you wanted to buy right here, this is a profit target. Next one, next one. You know, if it goes through one, wait for the next one. If it goes through that, get out at the next one. You know, our signals happen to give a counter trend sell signal right here. Uh, and it went up without a whole lot of momentum. The trend was down on the day. Drawing your fibs on the uh, chart definitely had you, you know, wanting to sell the 50% retracement. So you go short right there. You know, and this is the exact same pattern I just showed you, you know, uh, with the build your own trend tools on here um, a, a second ago. Let me, um, bring that back up and we'll, uh, showcase that. Whoops, wrong one. Trying to find it. Here it is, pound, dollar. Notice, you know, went up with decent strength, pulled back, not that much weakness, went up with some strength, but virtually nothing compared to the previous one. It's very likely to fail here, and it dropped. And I don't have our FX value areas on this chart. If you want to add them to your charts, very easy. Right click, go to chart settings, add script, go down to uh, the FX value areas, and this is how many um, pixels you show the previous days and previous weeks. I obviously have the weeks much thicker, and how many... Uh, pips padding to put the gray uh, color above and below the other colors. That way the, these areas are so important. It's very important that they stand out on your chart. That's why I have yellow in the middle with a little bit of gray above and below it so you can distinguish it from other areas. These are critical. These are real prices that real the world's biggest traders have traded at and have huge positions at. And guess what? They defend their positions by buying there earlier and once broken they tend to sell there. And that's you know, how you use it. it's pretty self-explanatory. If one level gets uh, acts as resistance and selling, it's likely to work its way down to the next level. These act as magnets, and they almost kind of work their way and get pulled to these levels. Let's look for some of our other trades. Notice the Euro Yen above the value area the previous day. It's likely to go up. Once it comes back into that range, it's likely to work its way to the point of control, average price of yesterday. Sometimes the point of control is all the way near the the bottom value area, sometimes it's right at or near the top, and some days it's in the middle. Again, this is where most of the activity yesterday happened, and, you know, what this is telling you is that the majority of trading activity happened uh, underneath uh, the value area. didn't occur above it. Most of the activity yesterday occurred underneath here. So once it breaks under this level, you can go short, but this is your profit target, and today it was so weak that it broke this area, and our trailing stop kept you in that trade. You can just use a trailing stop to get out, or you can use our, in fact, you can use a trailing stop to get in and out, or put on a moving average, five period, two shifted to the right, and you can you can also just use a regular 20 period or 10 period. It's up to you. Experiment. Do a little bit of work. Take some initiative and find out what works best for you. I mean, so many people ask me what they should use, and I don't know them. Uh, some people are really nervous traders. Other people are fearless. You know, most people start off nervous, uh, you know, because you don't want to lose your money. Obviously, that's to be expected. But the sooner you possibly can, you got to get over that and treat it like a business. And it's just pure math. There's nothing to get uh, scared about or excited about. Don't get excited when the trade takes off and goes 50 pips, nor should you get worried when it goes 10 pips against you. Just take your 10 pip loss and get out and move on. 
So you can see this one pull back up without that much um, strength. Major resistance here, both the Fibonacci area and my uh, value area point of control of yesterday. This is where the market spent most of its day trading. If you go back and, and look at yesterday, you can kind of see that. Lots of time right here, many hours. Also last night, uh, during the day here, many, uh, many, we'll spend a lot of time at that area. This is a very critical level. And that's why these, these work. These are where, like I said, the world's biggest traders, the biggest country and in institutions trading uh, have their positions at. And so they de not only do they defend them, but guess what? If they're, for whatever reason, long and price breaks down, they're losing money and they're losing a ton of money, more money than myself and all of our traders combined earn in our lifetimes. I mean, you know, for every pip it moves, they're losing fortune. So when it comes back up and allows them, you know, to get out at break even, they're happy to do so. Boom, they're out. That's why they're selling there. And then the trend continues. And this, you know, makes a really wonderful uh, exit method too. When price is going sideways and it breaks the moving average, which it can happen, wait for it to go a pip or two above the high. Or in this case, this is a value area low here. I'd wait for it to go a pip or two above above this. It's very likely to stay underneath there, so there's no reason, you know, to get out there. Wait. And a lot of times when trends are real, they're moving two waves. You know, down, sideways, down. Get out at the second wave. You know, and catch extra pips, maybe another 20 pips, maybe only five. But those extra five to 20 pips can help you get rid of, you know, one to four or five losses, especially if you keep them small. Move your stop to break even as soon as you possibly can as well. Here's the pound dollar. This one opened above the uh, yesterday's value area high and above last week's most traded price. It's also the monthly pivot with the average price of the previous month. Very key. Uh, area. If it stays above here, it's likely to go up. Once it breaks here, it's likely to go down. And it doesn't always do so immediately. You can see this one kind of went down and tried to go down and failed. Right? Notice when it went down there, it wasn't that much strength. Tried to go higher, and it first had a little bit of strength. If you bought here, guess what? You would have a loss. Well, unfortunately, it failed to go up. So when it goes back down there again, you got to go short again. And that one, you know, led to a huge profit. You have all these support areas all the way down here. It's very likely to stop at one of them. Uh, and it pretty much stalled right at yesterday's value area low. And, you know, lower containment bands are usually a good place. When you have all these levels of support all in the same area and price really can't break underneath there, you might want to look to go long as soon as it, you know, give it an hour to an hour and a half to go sideways. And it breaks out, right back up to these, you know, critical resistance area where there's likely to be selling. In fact, you know, go short right here. Unfortunately, on the way down, there wasn't that much weakness. So, sorry, but you didn't make that much money on that trade. It's not going to be that big a deal, really. All right, so here's the dollar Swiss. Value area is near the low. Above there, you want to buy. Guess what? It went up. Look where it went, right to the value area high in the monthly pivot. Previous day's high is a little bit above it. When it breaks out right here, you get in and it takes off and goes to the next area, the value area low of last week. So what that's telling you is because this is red, this is where the low of last week is. So this was in a downtrend last week. It's kind of doing a counter trend move uh, today. This is the point of control of last week. Usually when the currency is going up, but it's against last week's trend, you know, you might want to draw your fibs on this and look to uh, do counter trend trades up, up at this level here. When the market's stuck between all this support resistance, I typically try to avoid trades. Uh, here's what it looked like on um, just a five pips per bar chart with no other indicators uh, using the build your own trend uh, in color form. So this was trending up, pull back, it got less weak right here. You might have went long. Well, guess what? That trade didn't work, but you maybe you only lost five pips. Maybe you broke even, pulled back again, gets less weak right here. It starts going back up. You go long and it gets darker green. That's good. That's what the lean, the green gets lighter green right here. You get out of your trade or you put your stop underneath those lows and you made uh, 10, 20, 25, 30 pips. You risked six to 10 pips and you made 30 pips. I mean, really that's uh, trading in a nutshell. It's not complicated. It should be no emotion whatsoever. This one opened up today underneath the point of control underneath yesterday's value area. So the likely direction, guess what? It's down and it's just kind of chopping around here. Uh, and when it finally breaks down underneath those lows, you go short. 
and I would draw my fibs off this last wave right here to get an idea of where my profit target is and guess where it stopped right between the first and second fib target Add in. notice where the low today was the point of control of yesterday you know when it comes down there with a lot of weakness you probably don't want to buy it it's underneath the hourly moving average which tends to uh, lead to a down move but guess what the daily trend the weekly trend monthly trends up so when it double bottoms right here with not that much weakness you go long when it breaks out right here hoping that it goes above the value area and high and when it does you know you might want to exit at the previous month's high right here this is the CAD yen let me see here if I have that one uh, with the colored strips yes I do notice this pullback right here not, it's green you buy it, it goes up to the fib target and it's also the fib target that I do each night for you I spend 30 minutes every night doing Fibonacci analysis, put these FIB levels on the chart, FIB profit targets in dark gray, so that you don't have to. I try to do as much for you as I possibly can because our whole business model is centered around getting our trading traders profitable. And, you know, when we have a profitable trader, uh, we tend to keep them forever. And, you know, that's why we give our software away for free. We do our training for free. Please watch our videos as much as you possibly can and, you know, learn everything you can and just trade exactly the way we teach.